Good morning. Good morning. We'd like to welcome you to our morning worship service here at the Midtown Church of Christ, where Dr. D.C. Washington is our senior minister. Our first selection this morning will be hymn number 273. Hymn number 273. Two seven three. It will have a little sing. There is a name I love to hear, and I love to sing. It's word, it sound like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. And oh, I love Jesus so. How I love Jesus, and oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. It tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his bread. Just blood, the sinner's perfect plea. And oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. And oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. It tells of one whose loving heart can fill my deepest woe. And his sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. And oh, how I love Jesus. How I love Jesus, and oh, I love Jesus, because he first loved me. At this time, we have announcements. Good morning, Midtown. Um, at this time, uh, we'd like to acknowledge any first-time visitors. If you are streaming with us for the first time, um, we want to welcome you to Church of Midtown. We understand that you have many choices, and we're eternally grateful that you chose to worship with us this morning. Um, we would also like to uh, like you to drop us a line. If you go to our website, cocomidtown.com, that's cocomidtown.com, under the contacts and in the subject, you can put visitor and let us know how you enjoyed the service. All right? Thank you very much. Hymn number 19 in our spiral book. Hymn number 19. <laughs> 19 in the spiral book. Holy Spirit. They want to sing. Holy Spirit, dwell in me. Touch my eyes that I might see. Oh, your good. Grace and power, just the heavy beside me. Every hour will be my drink, be my living bread. Just keep me sheltered and keep me fed. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, dwell in me. Holy Spirit, comfort me. Let my heart be one with thee. When I'm worried, so my mind just let me sway. Come and find where may I run this wicked race. Be healed by your amazing grace. And Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, comfort me. Me, Holy Spirit, rescue me. 
set my soul completely free. Be inside Jordan, make my bed in God's bosom. Lay my head, let me live in a brand new place just to see my Savior's face and Holy Spirit, oh Holy Spirit, rescue me. are able to stand, please stand for prayer. Let's go to God in prayer. Our Father and our God, we thank you, Father, this morning for the new day you set before us, the opportunity you gave us, Father, to come out and give honor, glory, and praise to you. We pray that everyone, Father, to be here this morning, they could be anywhere, but they chose to be here this morning to take part, Father, in the service, Father, and to give honor, glory, and praise to you. Today, Father, is your day, Father. We come out, Father, and to give honor, glory, and praise to you. Thank you, Father, for protect us out of our common danger. Thank you, Father, for all the things we are. You've given us the opportunity, Father, to can be somebody. We thank you. We praise you. We pray, Father, for our young children, Father. For all these things, Father, they have to be strong. We have to pray, Father. Keep praying for them. Because, Father, the devil is loose, Father. And he try everything, Father, to um, have us go against what he asks of us. We thank you. We praise you, Father. We have no problem doing it, Father. You enable us to do everything you ask. Father, and we willingly come to do the things you ask of us. We thank you, we praise you, Lord. This is my prayer in Jesus' holy and divine name. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Hymn number When the Savior calls, I will answer. And when he calls for me, I will hear. And when the Savior calls, I will answer. And will I be somewhere listening for my Will I be somewhere listening? And I'll be somewhere, and I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Well, I'll be somewhere listening, and I'll be somewhere listening, and I'll be somewhere listening for my name. If my heart is right, when he calls, well, if my heart is right, then I will hear him. Well, if my heart is right, when he calls, well, I'll be somewhere listening for my Well, I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Well, I'll be somewhere listening, and I'll be somewhere listening, and I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Well, if my robe is white, oh, when he calls, well, if my robe is white, then I will hear him. Well, if my robe is white, oh, when he calls, and I'll be somewhere, 
his name for mine. Well, I'll be somewhere unless, and I'll be somewhere unless, and I'll be somewhere unless thing for mine is for mine. Well, I'll be somewhere unless, and I'll be somewhere unless thing, I'll be somewhere. A listening for my name. If you will, turn your hymn books to hymn number 321. We will sing one verse of hymn number 321, after which we will have our communion and our collection. Hymn number 321, first verse of hymn 321. Everyone have a verse. And let my Savior play, and then my servant die. Would he devote that sacred hand for such a word as I? This is the point in our service where we take the communion, the Lord's Supper. In accordance with scripture, in Acts 20, verse 7, we are to partake of the communion on the first day of the week. It reads, now on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his speech until midnight. Paul, writing to the church at Corinth, wrote the following, for I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of, of me. Let us pray for the bread. Father God in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity to come together, Father, and we once more remember our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray as we partake of this uh, Lord's Supper, Father, that we do so with clean hands and pure heart. For us in Christ's name we pray, amen. Let us access the bread. And now let us eat. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray for the cup. Father God in heaven, once again, we approach your throne, giving thanks, Father, for our Lord and Savior who laid down his life for us. As we partake of this cup, Father, we do so once again in remembrance of him. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let us access the cup. Let us drink. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This concludes the Lord's Supper. Next we have our collection. Supper then apart from the Lord's Supper, on the first day of the week, we are also to take up a collection. Accordingly, 1 Corinthians 16, um, verses 1 through 2 reads this way. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given the orders of the churches of Galatia, so must you do also. On the first day of the week, let each one of you lay something aside, storing up as he may prosper, that there be no collections when I come. Let's pray for the giving. And Father God in heaven, we thank you once again, Father, for just all the many blessings you bestow upon us, those things that we see as well as those things we see not. We pray most especially, Father, for those, uh, for allowing us to be able to have the means by which to support ourselves, our families, Father, and most importantly, to support the church. We pray, Father, as we prepare to give, that we do so uh, willingly, not grudgingly, or out of necessity. We thank you, Father, just for all your many blessings for us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Those present here, please feel free to place your offering and the plates on the table. Like those who are at home, you may also give through the church app, 
on the Midtown Church of Christ website or by mail. And using the church app or website, simply follow the step-by-step -step directions after clicking on the button to give. If you choose to mail your donation, that mailing address is Midtown Church of Christ, P.O. Box number 585572. Again, P.O. Box 585572, Orlando, Florida, 32858. Thank you. Fire's dark on every hand, and we cannot understand all the ways that God will lead us to that blessed promised land. But he'll guide us with his eye, and we'll follow till we die, and we will understand it. By and by, hell, I'm singing by and by. Lord, when the morning, well, then you'll know that all the saints of God are gathered. And we will tell that story, Lord, how we overcome. And we will understand it better by and by. We are often destitute of all the things that life demands. Want of shelter and a food, thirsty hills and barren. But we're trusting in the Lord and according to his word. We will understand it better by him. And I'm singing by and by. Lord, when morning comes, well, and you know that all the saints of God are gathering, and we will tell that story, Lord, how we've overcome, and we will stand it better by and by. Temptations, hidden snares will often take us unawares, and our hearts are made to play for His thoughtless word or day, and we wonder why the test when we try to do our best, but we'll understand it better behind and well I'm singing by and by Lord when the morning comes well and you know that all the saints of God are gathering and we will tell that story Lord how We've overcome, and we will understand it better by and by. And I'm singing by and by. Lord, when the morning comes, well, then you'll know that all the saints of God are gathering and we will tell that story, Lord, how we've overcome. And we will understand it better by and by. If you will, turn your hymn books to hymn number 613 will be our song of invitation. Mark your hymn book 613 will be our invitation song. If you will, turn your hymn books to hymn number 42 and I aspire. Hymn number 42 and I aspire. 
We will sing hallelujah. Hymn number 42. Hymn number 42. When we reach that city of the New Jerusalem, and lo, we're gonna sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by, how the ransom singers will together live. And lo, we're gonna sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by, we'll Oh, what joy when we get, and Lord, we're going to rest, rest beneath the cloudless storm. Well, in, in that land where the saints were dead, and Lord, we're going to sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah by and by. Voices will so sweetly, and Lord, we're gonna sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by. Well, and gone will be our sadness, pleasures that will never end. And Lord, we're gonna sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by. Victory and love will be our everlasting. And Lord, we're going to sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by. We'll be praising our Redeemer, Debbie. Inside the crystals, and Lord, we're gonna sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by, Lord, oh, what a joy when we get home, and Lord, we're gonna. And I could sing too. Amen. Amen. The psalmist says, Praise the Lord. Yeah, he says, Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. 
praise him according to, that's in proportion, according to his excellent greatness. Then the psalmist of old says, praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dorms. Praise him with string instruments and flute. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Then the psalmist concludes like this. He says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Then it got so good to him, he says, praise the Lord. You know, uh, back in uh, my uh, hanging out days, TJ, uh, we used to be uh, at the uh, gathering plot spot and uh, at the gathering place and uh, sitting by the water hole. And um, if the song was just right and the crowd was moving good, they would say, bring that beat back. You remember that? Uh, James remember when they used to bring uh, uh, the beat back. And so that's what the psalmist is saying here in my mind. He says, let everything that have breath Praise the Lord. And then he says it one more time. He says, praise the Lord. Evidently, that praise was at the top of the psalmist's mind. Evidently, praise uh, got so good to him that he, he didn't need to say it once, but he said it twice. This song of praise, and I don't know if you know it or not. We sang this song. We'll sing hallelujah by and by. This song, the word hallelujah means pious praise. Uh, not only should we sing hallelujah, it's all right to say hallelujah, and it's all right to express the highest praise. Uh, it's okay to uh, praise him uh, uh, any day of the week. It's okay to praise him at any time in your life. The psalmist says praise who? Praise the Lord. Where to praise him? In his sanctuary. How high should your praise go up? He says in his mighty firmament. That's like we used to say throw your hands in it. Come on now. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. In other words, if God ain't done nothing for you, just be quiet. Alright? If God God has done nothing for you, just hold your peace. But if he's done anything to you, through you, and for you, you ought to have a praise. You ought to have a testimony. Uh, somebody ought to say uh, how good God has been. And then he told the people of old uh, in the sanctuary back in the Old Testament that used the instruments that David commanded. And so he said that the sound of the trumpet at one point they would go off. Then the lute and the harp would go off. And the timbrel and dance and they would go. String instruments and flute, loud cymbals, clashing cymbals. And then he says, let everything that have breath. Now we know instrumentally he's talking about it if it's blown. But, we would, but for us contemporarily, he says, let everything that have breath. If you're here this morning, you fogging up a glass. Let everything that have breath. Praise the Lord. The psalmist says, praise the Lord. And I don't know about you, but I'm not going to let no inanimate object, object beat me praising the Lord. God has been too good to me. Uh, he's been better to me than I've been to myself. And that's not just a cliche. That's a God honest truth. We serve a good God. And he's worthy of our praise. Uh, we're asking that you, in addition to lifting up your praise on a daily basis, to also continue uh, to pray for the family here at Mill Point as many as uh, agree with me going uh, at this time, even uh, Brother James, who uh, made his way back here. And y'all um, song with him and certainly appreciates that. Uh, y'all continue to encourage him uh, as others who are believing and grieving uh, at this time. We ask that you stand on your feet. We ask that you stand on your feet. We ask that you stand on your feet for the reading of the scripture text in reference to the word of God. We ask that you stand on your feet. I want you to take your Bible, your personal copy of the pages of inspiration. Hold it up in the air. Hold it up in the air. Repeat after me. When I'm in worship, I read my Bible. Because I don't know preaching. Check on, check on, make sure I'm telling it like it is. Turn it over to the book of Ephesians. The chapter is six. We'll begin reading at verse number 10 and conclude our reading at verse number 11. Ephesians uh, chapter six, 
begin our reading at verse number 10, conclude our reading at verse number 11. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. If you have a reliable translation, it should not differ significantly. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 10. All that have it, confirm it by saying amen. 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 Paul says, finally, my brothers, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. I read from the Hebrew Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 and 11 that all those who agree and believe that the body is the word of God say amen. amen. And you may have your seats at this time. I don't watch uh, too much TV. In fact, I have a, an aversion to it comes from a time in grade school where I read an article detailing the harmful effects of too much television. I don't know if we realize how harmful it is. It negatively affects every single facet of our lives. Mentally, it can create a false reality and distort how we view ourselves and others. We often imitate the behaviors that we consume on our TV. But if that wasn't enough, it hurts our health. Being a couch potato, as we used to call it in the 80s, leads to obesity, high blood pressure, heart disease, and glucose intolerance. But it doesn't just stop there. The thing that stuck out to me most as a young man was not only did it affect your health, but it affected your wealth as well. People with the worst jobs watched the most TV and made much less money than someone who lived their time in front of the screen. Watching TV is not innately wrong, but it's downright sinful for me. James says, therefore, to him that knows to do good and does it not, to him it is sin. Oh, boy, y'all ain't going to work with me this morning. Uh, because that's fixed in my memory, you won't find me watching a lot of TV, maybe two to three hours a week. I'm going to be sure to turn you on this afternoon, James, to watch them Lakers lose. But Amen. when I do, <laughs> oh, I mess with my sister. But when I do, it never fails to amaze me. It never fails that something pops up on the screen uh, that amazes me. And I think to myself something like, who does that? That's a hit show on TV. I can't believe it. Uh, most recently, I had that reaction to a show on the Discovery Channel. It's called Naked and Afraid. Discovery.com describes the show like this. What happens when you put two complete strangers, sans or without clothes, in some of the most extreme environments on earth? Each male-female duo is left with no food. No water, no clothes, and only one survival item each as they attempt to survive on their own. Down into me, that, that don't make nonsense. Uh, and you know, reality shows are so extreme. I, I thought to myself, who does that? There ain't enough money in the world to get me on a deserted place. And somebody say amen. Uh, but the fans say the show, but fans of the show uh, say it's different than other reality TV shows. Rather than exploiting the negative sides of people, it celebrates human strength and ingenuity. Uh, I don't know about that, but I'm here to tell you there isn't enough money in the world to go around in the world to get me to go naked outside in the wild blue yonder. Uh, sunburn and bug bites in private areas, heat stroke. Uh, freezing to death are not my idea of a good time. Who wants to be naked and afraid? Uh, <laughs> but rather we know it or not, uh, rather we know it or not, we put ourselves in the same place spiritual. Uh, uh, Nikki, sometimes you got to see things in the spiritual realm. We, we leave home half naked 
every day. We have clothes on our back, but our spiritual bodies are bare. We put on belts, but we haven't girded ourselves with the truth. We wear undershirts and bras, but fail to put on the blessed plate of righteousness. We wear Jordans, Air Force Ones, and even red bottles, but our feet have not been shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. If it's forecasted to rain, we often take a raincoat or an umbrella, but the shield of faith is left hanging in the closet. We put on hats, but leave the helmet of salvation on the rack. We tote guns and knives, but leave behind the sword of the spirit. The physical man is fully clothed most of the time, uh, but the spiritual man is scantily exposed. We are half naked, and because of the uncertainty in life, its trials and tribulations and temptations, we often are found to be timid and emotionally out of sorts. We are not suited for battle and unable to act fearlessly. We are half naked uh, and afraid. We we are half naked and afraid. We leave these what well, we leave our homes well prepared for the day. We we dress for each and every occasion. If we're going to a formal event, we we wear formal attire. When we go to a picnic or something, we dress formally and then not color. We we get dressed for every event. It's uh, one of the very most beautiful things about formal occasions is men get to take advantage of a secret uh, uh, that women get to do always. What you talking about? Uh, uh, Mama taught me that uh, uh, most women have on more clothes under their clothes than they do on top of the clothes. Amen. Uh, uh, come on now. Y'all work with me now. James, James work with me. James, my boy. I don't worry about it. I ain't know you're going to make it, but he made it. Uh, 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 yeah, well, they have more under the clothes. Uh, uh, and but one thing, when we go to formal occasions, men get to wear a tuxedo. Amen. Uh, uh, the beautiful thing about a tuxedo is the one garment uh, that parallels the women's garment. What are you talking about? It's designed to hide the man's flaws. A man will not never looks any better than a well-fit tuxedo because uh, uh, it hides all the stuff you want to hide. Amen. And it accentuates the stuff you want to accentuate. And it'll make you look like you got some stuff you ain't even got. Amen. Uh, it'll make your shoulders look broad. it make your chest poke out. Amen. And it holds your stomach. Come on, somebody say amen. And I'm looking at Tay. He, he don't know that he's a pot belly is in his future. But he's my nephew. And, and, and you can't run from DNA. Amen. Amen. He looking all good. Nah. <laughs> Wearing tight shirts. Nah. But one thing about a tuxedo, he can hold some things in, hide some things, and you look good. And one one of my uh, professors in 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 college taught me. She uh, he taught me. He says uh, one day I was coming to school, and I was sick, and, and I wasn't feeling good, and uh, had flu, cold, something, uh, and and I had on my scrubs. Y'all know uh, uh, the hospital scrubs, and they was they was wrinkled, not wrinkled, but wrinkled, and. and uh, 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 they was wrinkled up, and I was just, I just barely made it. And the only reason I came, because this one professor counts attendance, amen. And nobody else cares whether you're there. Come on, y'all. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, this one uh, uh, professor 
uh, 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 he cared. And, he, and so he counted attendance. So he had, I had to come. Uh, and so I showed up. At, uh, 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 Mr. Bailey, he would, even as a young man, he would call you Mr. He would say, Mr. Washington, uh, why are you looking the way you're looking today? And I said, man, I'm sick. You know, you know how it is when you're sick, you're short. You know what I mean? I'm short, but I mean short-tempered, amen. Uh, uh, you know, you're short and people get on your nerves. You ain't got time for this conversation. I'm looking, I'm, I'm coughing, sneezing. This back then when you, when, when you were sick and show up anyway. Right. Now when you're sick, stay home. Amen. By the way, church, if you're sick, this is why we do it online. So if you're sick, stay home. Amen. Now when you get well, come on back. All my online people, when you get well, come back. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If you're out of town, watch online. You know what I mean? Take some communion with you. Uh, but when you're sick and back in town, come back. Uh, but this is a time when you used to try to muscle it up, right? Go to work, sick. Now, nah, you know, no. Stay home and don't get everybody else COVID. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Okay, y'all, all right. I'm worried. I'm worried. Uh, 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 but so I showed up. I'm sick. He said, uh, Mr. Washington, what's going on? What, what's going on? And I said, man, I'm sick. He says, well, why aren't you dressed better? I said, I'm, I'm sick. <laughs> I wanted to tell him something else, but he was the assistant dean. <laughs> I wanted to tell him to get off me, <laughs> uh, back up off me. <laughs> Smell the car. Okay, no, so I said, I'm sick. He says, well, why don't you dress better? I said, because I'm sick. He says, he says, then you ought to dress even better. Why? He says, when you look good, you feel good. And when you feel good, you do well. That's why we in. When we wear a tuxedo, then we step out on top. We, you know, we ready to go. Yeah, we out. We hanging out. We good. Because we look good. Uh huh. And somebody's helped us. Say amen. And if you don't know how to hang a suit, somebody that got the stove, he taking all the measurements, getting everything. And that's why they, you can't just walk in and get one. They cut that thing, man. They get it all adjusted and they make it. And that's, man, when they get that all the time, man. We have to, you know. Anyway. <laughs> and, so, and so when you're dressed that way, you're able to be bold. You might cut the rug. And when I put on a tuxedo, I do my two-step. I don't do it no other time. Amen, amen. And, oh, the preacher Dan, yeah. Amen. Not well. <laughs> Oh, yeah. we, we do all this stuff, and then we don't talk about it, church. Y'all know y'all be joking. Amen. 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 I don't see y'all doing the electric slide and the wobble and whatever it is. <sighs> Cupid shovel. That's the one. That's the one. But you're bold, and you step out, and you're confident when you feel drained. But we're not bold spiritually. I think it's because we're half naked. And when you're not fully dressed, you can be afraid. We're walking around fully clothed. But the souls are naked. And because we're naked, we, walk, we live timid and powerless lives. Y'all got time for this? Ephesians chapter 6, Ephesians chapter 6, yeah, half naked and afraid. Thank you, thank you, Richard. Richard's got it on his feet. Ephesians chapter 6. Let me, let me give you the Ephesians context. Y'all, the church at Ephesus, um, Ephesus was a major city uh, in the region, a, a, one of the crowning cities in that region, largest city. It was home of the, uh, the, the goddess Diana, also known as Artemis. And Artemis was thought to be the principal, thank you, sir, uh, uh, the principal uh, deity for them. Uh, Artem Artemis was thought to have all the cosmic power. Uh, pictures of Artemis or Diana uh, show even the zodiac, all the zodiac signs in a necklace around her neck. And, and Artemis Diana uh, uh, was the one, uh, uh, if you look at these old goddesses and gods, she had many breasts, and that was to show her power. And she was even thought to be uh, uh, supreme and master over uh, fertility. And so uh, uh, Artemis or Diana uh, was huge. Uh, and not sure her worship was so huge that they built this huge temple whose ruins you can still find today. And, and, and the temple uh, uh, was so big. And uh, the temple was such a center of, of the environment, a center of their commerce. The te this temple took in so much money that the temple also served as a bank. 
it was so big that it was their bank. If you wanted to take out a loan or deposit money, you went to the temple of Diana. And so this worship of Diana was central. Part of the worship act was to visit the temple priestess. Y'all follow me? Read between the lines. So you went in uh, with your money to worship. Come on now, y'all see what I'm saying? This was the central religion in the region. And it was such a big deal that when Paul came into town, they had this woman soothsaying and prophesying and Paul kicked the demon out of her. Y'all remember that? And, and they was mad. Her keepers was mad uh, because Paul had taken away the ability to earn money. Uh, uh, side comment down, magicians are freebie from DV, DZ. Oftentimes when we look at our political structures and what's going on, just follow the money. You think they're doing it because it's right or wrong? No. Somebody's getting paid. Nevertheless, Paul shut that down. So they threw Paul in prison. They, there was a big riot because Paul had taken away their means to earn money. But this, the church grew there. The church prospered there. The church there, and so the, it was, its influence was so huge, Paul sent Timothy there. First and second Timothy, for this reason. He, I left you in Ephesus. Ephesus was a big deal. And so that, that was their environment. It was a major city, but it had some major idol worship going on. So when Paul is writing these people, he's writing them uh, with the mindset. He's writing them thinking about all the stuff that's going on behind the scenes. Side comment, church, when you deal with people and you try to help people, you can't ignore what's going on in their life. You got to speak to what's happening in their life and you got to understand the stress and the struggle they're going through. So many times in life when we try to help people and we do try to help people, we want to jump on them and help them without really getting to know them and understanding their situation. And so Paul here, he's been to Ephesus. He's helped start the church and he sent the young man Timothy there. So he's well acquainted uh, with the people. Uh, uh, and so in chapter six, uh, in verse number 10, Paul says, finally. And he's saying finally because uh, uh, he's gone f three chapters talking about uh, uh, their new standing in Christ, how they're called to be in Christ, how Christ uh, is the new uh, uh, mystery revealed, how the mystery of God was hidden in Christ, that they don't need to worry about mystery in religions. They don't need to worry about uh, these gods and goddesses and these rituals. This, the mystery that they needed to understand was revealed in Christ. And then he calls them beginning in chapter 4 to live lives worthy of that. Uh, uh, to specifically in chapter 4, 1 through 6, to be unity. He says that like, like, we all might be on the same page. The book was about unity. In four, uh, uh, 4, 5, and 6, you know, he says there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. Y'all know the text. He's calling them to be together because the God we serve is one God. He's a unified God. And so he tells them how to live in chapters 4 and 5. And that's when in chapter 5 he says, husbands love your wives, wives respect and obey your husband and children. Uh, do what your parents say uh, if you want to live. Amen. Uh, that's in chapter 6. I'm paraphrasing. And so he tells them who they are, their new nature in Christ, calling them to be unified. And based on who they are and their identity, he's saying you need to behave a certain way. Amen. And he teaches them what that behavior is. And so when he says, finally, this is his last thing. And like most uh, uh, people who are, are used to addressing the audience, they say the best for last. So he says, finally, my brother. And brethren means men and women. This is for everybody. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He calls them to be strong, uh, but he also tells them where to be strong in. Some of us are strong, but we're strong in the wrong thing. Amen. Uh, you ever knew somebody that was loud and loud and wrong? Amen. Amen. I, you know, you can be, it's one thing to be wrong, but to be loud and wrong? It's just embarrassing. He tells them not to just be strong. He says, be strong in the Lord. Uh, be strong in God. Be strong in your faith. Be strong in the Lord. We want to be strong in everything else. Do we go to the gym more than we get in the Bible? Yeah. Be strong in the Lord. Yeah. Your strength ought to be in him. 
And I see Snooks. Snooks is right. Snooks, Snooks goes to the gym. I see him. <laughs> uh, he goes to the gym, man. You know, them ain't, that ain't just air up there. You know what I mean? I see him and his young friends showing out. Hey, man. Uh, uh, but he says, be strong. Ain't nothing what, uh, uh, the Bible tells us that physical health is, is profitable, profitable, but godly health, spiritual health, is more profitable. Y'all don't believe that. We'll talk about that next week. He says, finally, my brother, be strong where? In the Lord. And in the power of his might, not this idol worship power, but in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He says, you got to do that. He says, finally, I need you to do that. But then now he's going to elaborate, tell us how, how we're going to do that. He says, put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor. Put on the whole thing. Hmm? Get fully dressed. Uh, uh, we walk out half naked. He says, be fully dressed. And, and, and when we talk about these implements, I, I, a lot of, you hear a lot of preachers talk about, well, this could be this and this and that. No, the point ain't what the implements are. Because Paul is looking back to what Isaiah wrote on the topic and also to what the Proverbs speak about this topic, about being spiritually dressed. Uh, and so he uses those uh, metaphors figuratively, and there's a little bit of uh, 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 variation that can apply. He wrote to uh, the Galatians similarly. He wrote to the church at Colossae similarly. So he uses these metaphors just to talk about spiritual attributes. So don't get fixed that the belt is this and that. It ain't about that. What it's about is about being completely dressed. What it's about is putting on the whole armor. Amen. He says that why are you going to put on the whole armor? That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. I know we live in an age people don't believe this is a devil. We don't. We don't believe it's a devil. We don't believe it's a devil and we don't believe it's a hell. But it's amazing to me that you can ask people how many believe in heaven. Uh, and there's 70, 70, 80 percent will tell you they believe in heaven. But 10% will say they believe in hell. Problem with that is the presence of a heaven necessitates there be a hell. Because hell is everywhere, heaven is not. If you can be in a heaven, you can be outside it. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the cunningness of the devil. The devil has schemes. Uh, he don't hit you straight up. He has schemes. And he gets you where you're weak. The, the, Jesus said the, the, he, he walks around as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Y'all watch the Discovery Channel. Y'all might not watch this show, but y'all seen them shows. Uh, where that one little gazelle is caught up by himself. The, wild, the wildebeest is caught on his own. Which one does he get? The one that's over there by themselves, with the head in the mud, not paying attention. Everybody gets up and go. They still there. And that's what Satan does. He tricks us. He pulls us away. He gets us when we're alone. That's why the worst thing you can do when you're going through something is be by yourself. Because depression and isolation leads to more depression and isolation, which leads to more depression and isolation. He says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Why? Because our battle is not physical. He says, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. What he's really trying to tell him is that you got people around you that don't believe what you believe, but you're fighting with them. Your fight is not with them. And, and, and many times, we, even in our own self, we, we fight against people. The fight, it really ain't about them. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities, powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of weaknesses, of weak, wickedness in heavenly places. What is he describing? He says he's describing the political and the military infrastructure of the Roman government. 
And he says it's not against the people. He said what's broken is the system and what's beneath the system. Uh, uh, what's motivating the system against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. At the time Paul writes, they had three uh, uh, emperors that were the worst in, in history. They had Nero, uh, uh, they had Caligula, and, and they had uh, uh, Domitian. And these were the three most evil people. Uh, Caligula's so bad, they made movies after him, and all them movies weren't good movies. <sighs> he says, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual, spiritual host. The word host means army. Against spiritual hosts of weakness, wickedness in heavenly or in high places. The devil puts people in office. Nude flash, they Democrats and Republicans. Because we, we, we think whatever side you're on, you think the other side bad. That's universal. God's side is the right side. I know, I'm going to get in trouble again for that. He says, look, because your battle ain't, spread. the one, the real important battle ain't physical against all this other stuff, this evil, this infrastructure, this manifestation of the wiles of the devil. He says, because of this, take up, again, he says, the whole armor. That's how I know it's not about the individual pieces. He's saying put on the whole armor twice. Take up the whole armor of God. Any of you have ever been out of town, you had to get dressed for a specific occasion and you left that one thing? And that one thing, I mean, ladies ever had a ruin in the stocking, you had to rush and go out and brush. I know some brothers here that didn't rent the sun up to the stoke to get something that you don't know, have no idea. I need you to get these ones right here, make sure you get them. I, they all look the same to me. It's like you got to have a decoder ring to figure this stuff out. But when that one thing is left out, you feel off. You're not bold. You're not confident. So he says, take up the whole arm of God. And I'm glad he said, take up, because we don't put it down. All too often, we put our religion down, as we used to say. We lay it to the side. We put it on rest. But he says, take up. The whole arm of God. Why? That you may be able to withstand in the evil day. He says you need to put on the whole armor so you'll be able to stand. You need to put on the whole armor because evil times are coming. You need to put on the whole armor because these things are in place. We serve a wicked government. There's wicked powers going on. Uh, uh, schemes and devices that are constantly occurring around us. Don't we know? We say the government exists for our, our benefit, you know, utilities and structure and roads and all that infrastructure. Yeah, but they're also around to control us. And you think this one politician is doing because he like, no, 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 no. They just choose a different side of the issue so they can manipulate a different side of the population. It's all about power base and control. He says, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand. Withstand means you be able to take what the devil is putting out uh, in the evil day. And having done all, what? Stand. He says, after you've done everything, stand. Well, I don't know about what it is, but we as Christians act like we don't want to stand. We sit down. We even lay down. Paul says, put on the whole armor so that you're able to stand. He says, stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth. He says, put your belt on. And you know what a belt does for you. It holds stuff together. Amen. Uh, it wraps things around. He says, have your waist girded with truth. Uh, 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 truth is the thing that ought to be holding us together. Truth is the thing that we ought to be living through and wrapping things up. Uh, uh, he says, having your waist girded. He's just talking about what, what a soldier puts on. You got a belt on. It kind of holds things together. Think about Batman. Everything go on the utility belt. Amen. 
uh, he says, putting your uh, 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 waist girded with truth. Having on the breastplate of what? Righteousness. And that's not what righteousness you get through Christ. That's your righteous living. The thing that should be across your chest is how you live. We all want to stick our chest out. But do you got on the breastplate? And having your feet shod with the preparation of gospel of peace. Good shoes are necessary. The type of shoes is governed by uh, 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 the type of work you're doing. That's why in the workplace, they got OSHA got rules. You can't wear flip-flops. Why? Because you'll hurt yourself and fall and hurt somebody else. But we walk out. We don't have our laces tied. Having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith. Take the shield, which will be able to quench the fiery darts or arrows of the wicked one. We don't have our shields up. And we wonder why we're injured, hurt. Crippled. He said, put the shield of faith up. The shield for the, the, the Romans in particular was chiefly important. Uh, they would have a way of stacking the shields together. Y'all seen the movie 300? And they would put the shields together in such a way that it would make an impenetrable uh, wall. And through that, they'll be able to conquer the enemy. And he says, take the helmet of salvation. And then he says, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The interesting thing about it, all of these except for one is that they're all defensive. They're all defensive except for the sword. Everything is defensive except for the sword. Our offense is the book. But we often don't play good offense because we don't know the book. Let me say that again. We're not able to execute good offense because we don't know the book. That's what he used to say. Don't know. He said, "Don't take a knife to a gunfight." Yeah, and, 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 and don't. Uh, 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 if you, <laughs> no, I ain't gonna say that. That's probably pushing it too far. We got swords that we leave at home. We wonder why we don't win. We wonder why we're struggling. We're not equipped. We're so unprepared. We prepare for everything in our lives except for the spiritual world. And we wonder why we struggle. Four or five years or six or seven, we spend getting a bachelor's degree. Amen. <laughs> Come on now. Trying to get prepared to go work for somebody and be miserable. We go on docks, start working out, because we're going on a cruise in July. Amen. We prepare for everything except for. This side of life, what's the Bible say? Three score and ten, and by reason of strength, four score. You know, we don't, the American ain't in the blue zone. We got 80 years. We prepare more for the 80 than eternity. The helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always. Do we, do we got any praying people? I know, I, 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 we, 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 we ask for prayer, but do we pray? Amen. Praying when? Always. He told the Thessalonians, pray without ceasing. Never stop praying. Well, bro, watch I don't know how to pray. Yes, you do. 
Yes, we do. We know how to beg and ask. That's part, it's petition part. We know how to say please and thank you. That's a supplication part. We know how to pray if we know how to talk. Prayer is talking to God. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might is attaching to the source. That's what prayer is. We wonder why we run out of resources. We run out of resources, Nikki, because we don't attach to the source. Praying always. He said praying always with all prayer and supplication. What he's saying is, man, your prayer life has got to be diligent. Humble. He says, praying always with all prayer and supplication. He's multiplying. That's a Greek rhetoric kind of term. He's saying that our prayer has got to be intense. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the... It ain't about what you're saying. That's why when we, when we do brothers training class and teach brothers, play, one of the things we teach brothers, man, don't be up there praying forever. I mean, sometimes you got a lot, there's a lot that need to be said. Maybe you're praying and 10 people stood up. Now you got to pray for 10 people. Okay, I get it. That's a 10, that's a 10 person prayer. Amen. But we over, Jesus told him, he says, no, don't be like these other guys who pray long for show. He says, you pray. He says, the prayer that's going to work is the one that's in the spirit. It's the one that's meditating and it's got that mentation right. It's focused on God and it's connecting with my Lord. God, I'm trying to read. Sometimes the best prayer that I pray is, Lord, help me. Amen. Amen. Jesus, I need you. Help me, Lord. All prayer and supplication in the spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance. Supplication. Y'all keep seeing that over again. You're praying all the time. And you're not giving up. You stay with it. Sometimes we don't get places in life and with God. It's because we quit too soon. We quit too soon. Half of the success in life comes from perseverance. Anybody work for an incompetent boss before? You work for one or two. You know how you got there? Everybody else quit. <laughs> Man, we, you're amazed that how many people I see quit the job. Like, well, there ain't no advancement opportunity. How long you been there? Six weeks. <laughs> really? Well, I told them, and I have these kinds of skills. Perseverance. Hang in there. And specifically, this text is talking about hanging in there with God. But if you ain't hanging in there with God, your shield of faith is. And it says this prayer ought to be for all the saints. Now watch what Paul additionally asks him based upon this platform. He says, and then pray for me. Do we pray for other people? Because we're always asking folks to pray for us. Selfishly, as a preacher, I say, you know, I do the prayer requests, and then we have them on Sunday and Wednesday, and I write them down, and I pray for people throughout the week. And, and depending on what it is, I keep praying for them, you know what I mean? And I look back in my book to see how they're doing on the thing. And, and Does anybody pray for the preacher? Amen. And I ain't just talking about me as a preacher. I'm just saying, we ask other people to pray for us, but do we in turn pray for them? He says, pray for me. And this is the whole point. When I talk about half naked and afraid, you got the naked part. But this is the problem. Watch what Paul says. He says, and pray for me that utterance may be given to me, that, that, that I might get the words, hmm? that I might open my mouth how? Boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. He says, pray that I ain't scared when it's time to speak up for God. Pray that I'm not afraid and pray that I have the right words to say. Pray that I might be bold in my delivery of the word of God. That I may make known the mystery of the gospel, which I am an ambassador in chains. 
that I that in it I might speak boldly as I ought to speak. What's so crucial here is that Paul, we think, is in prison. And he, we think he's going to have to make an appearance before Caesar. And he's going to have to give an account and a testimony for the things uh, 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 that's been going on and the things that he's accused of. And Paul is saying, he has prayed for me when, when the time comes that I know what to say and that I'm not afraid. Amen. He says, I'm physically in chains. I'm an ambassador for Christ, but I'm in chains. I'm physically in chains. But spiritually, I'm fully clothed. I'm not naked. I'm not afraid. Put on the whole armor of God. Church, we have to start being fully equipped. We've got to start putting more into the spiritual side than we do the physical side. If we put as much in the spiritual side, or as half as what we put in the physical side, where would we be? Would we be a better church? Would we be a more confessing people? I even venture to say we'll be in a better place. Because God, we call him the Prince of Peace. God's got blessings for us. He wants us to have an abundant life. But we got to connect on the spiritual. And we got to put more into the spiritual than we do in the physical. Put on the whole armor of God. Let's endeavor to be better. Let's endeavor to make spiritual disciplines a part of our daily life. Let's make the endeavor to pray. You know, every Christian ought to pray at least five times a day. Seven if you're talking to us. One when you get up, two when you go to bed, and them five other times every time you eat. Amen. Amen. <laughs> if we pray once when we get up, once before we go to bed, and every time we eat, that's 2,000 prayers a year. Huh? And if you pray again on Sunday, if you don't do nothing but pray for the people that ask for prayer today, today. And then on Wednesday, now we don't have, now we're up to 20, 2,300 2, prayers. The way you master anything is through repetition. You don't start off running marathons. You do that run, walk, the 5K, Amen. And walk if you're me, amen. I don't run nowhere. Y'all, if y'all see some see me running, stop the car. Because somebody's chasing me, amen. <laughs> We've got to be serious about these spiritual disciplines. And the only way we're gonna do it is through repetition. And the only way we're gonna be able to participate in this battle is if we got the right weaponry. The only thing that we have offensive is the word of God. So we got to get good with that. But everything else is defensive. It comes through prayer, supplication, perseverance, prayer upon prayer. That's what the text is talking about. We got to gird our waist, put on our breastplate, guard our feet, put on the helmet. We got to be full of this because there's a war going on. And whether you know it or not, there is a war for our soul. There is a war happening each and every day. Society puts all kinds of images and things every day. Do we not realize just the imagery? One of the things that blew my mind is that when I was in college, I attended this lecture in college sometimes in the dorm. They have these lectures. And uh, uh, Bert Taylor, I used to always pick the one, depending on the group who had the most food, who I thought might have the most, most the best concessions and so uh, but one of these things I went through, it, it, it was a Christian thing. And what it did, it was show all the satanic imagery that is on a college campus. That's why so many of our children go away from school and come leave God. They don't even realize it, that even on some of the vending machines, satanic imagery, just stuff is dri- drawn a certain way. It's there, constantly in front of us. And this stuff is bombarding our brain. 
is put in our mind. It's even, uh, 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 it's, it's subtly introduced over and over again so that what is absurd becomes normal. There's a spiritual battle going on. And if we're not reinforcing it with the word, if we're not reinforcing it with spiritual things, we're going to lose the battle. We're not going to be able to be bold. We're not going to be able to speak. And we won't be able to win souls for Christ. Because the thrust of what Paul is writing to the Ephesian letter is so that they live the life that they're supposed to live so they can help other people. I want to go to heaven. I do. And I don't want to go by myself. What good is heaven all by itself? We got to help people alone. First thing you do when you tell you, um, when you, before you try to help somebody, you got to say yourself, amen. amen. You've been on an airplane, you say, you know, if something happens, the apartment, compartment depressurizes or whatever, it, they say this mass is going to drop down, amen. And he says it don't look inflated, but there really is oxygen. There really is oxygen. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, but they said there's oxygen. And said, so first thing you do, even if you have little children, they say don't worry about the little child. Put mass on you. Say yourself. Then proceed to help others. So our first calling as Christians is to save ourselves. We got to save ourselves. You know, you can't evangelize when you're in trouble. Amen. And that don't mean you got to be perfect. Amen. But you got to be on the plan. Uh, uh, one of the best, the most powerful uh, 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 treatment groups is NA and AA, Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous, because they take people huh, who come out of and they go help other people come out of. That's the same thing with us. Uh, we are sinners anonymous, amen? Yes, we are, church. And if you ever been to an AA meeting or an NA meeting, they stand up, they, what's the, the thing they do? They says, I am this. You know? They confess who they are. And then in who they are, they help other people. That's what ministry is. But we got to save ourselves. How do you do that? I believe starts with the belief. It starts with this choice of faith. Faith is a choice. But bro, I said, I don't have all the facts. You say this thing, so I'm a God, and I know, uh, 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 I know all the science says that it's creation by design seems to be the way, but I don't know if that's really God. Or that. I don't know. I can't be sure. That's why it's called faith. Faith at one level, when you wipe all the levels away, it's a choice. It's a choice. And whether you know it or not, faith pervades our lives every day. You know, uh, uh, faith, we, have, we put faith in everything but God. How many of us before we got here, when I got up two, three hours early and checked all the systems in their car? Did, okay, maybe not all the systems. Did you do like we used to do back in the day, check the oil or the fluids before you got in? Nobody did that? You got in the car and you hit the button or turn the thing. You trusted. You believed. Don't you know in that car, except for those with these fancy electrical vehicles, <laughs> but don't you know in the car there's this battery and then it's just gas. So you got this thing making sparks. And you got this combustible fluid. And then you got this engine compartment that's designed to spark that. Because your car runs off explosions. Your car is a bomb. Exploding. Oh, somebody might not get in the car before they leave. <laughs> it's exploding. Multiple times a minute. Explosions over and over again. We trust it. We believe it. Faith.
faith pervades everything. We didn't test these pews before we sat in them. We plopped our butt down. And between last week and this week, that's one or two more pounds. We trust everything we have faith in. Donnie, give me one of them dollars out of your pocket. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. What are you? Give me, give me any one of them. No, don't give me no big one. I might be tempted. Don't tempt the preacher. Okay, there you go. Give me, give me one of these dollars. I said Donnie, because I knew Donnie had a pocket full of them. Donnie, Donnie keeps some money. We take this thing. And we have a lot of these things we feel better about ourselves, don't we? And the more we have of these, the better we feel. Come on, y'all. Be honest, man. Have you ever been without any of these? Uh, this is normal. We, we grew up in close neighborhoods. It's been some days I ain't had none of these. We believe that this thing has value. Because somebody told us this means something. We think this means something. You can have one just like this. And if they have a two and a zero, we think that one is more than the other one. Same paper, same cost to produce. Except for the blue looking ones. You got any of those? No, no, no. And that's because they put that little thing, you know. We believe the one with the one zero zero is more than the just the one. And if somebody tell us different, <laughs> go to the store and somebody says ten dollars, and you hand them one of these. <laughs> The, the, the comment will be, that ain't enough. <laughs> we believe this. On this, it says, in God, we trust. The money got it right, but we don't. We got more faith in our pocket than we do in our hearts. Thank you, Donna. All right, I get it back to you. All right, it's a choice. It's a choice. Now, if you need some proof, we can study and talk about some of the stuff in the Bible and that it shows the points. If you need it, yes, yeah, so let's do a study. Let's talk about what you need, and we'll get it for you. But at some point, it becomes a choice. The choice is to believe. Believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Decide I'm going to live my life different. Another decision. That's what repentance is. I've changed my mind about how I've been living. I'm going to live my life different. That's called repentance. Then when you first come, you confess. Confess what? Not that you sinned. Because that's not news. You confess what you believe. You stand saying, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And based upon that confession, we'll baptize you in water. It's not an outward showing of an inward grace. It's not... Uh, it's not uh, 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 what you do as a symbol of what you are. It's that which saves you. It's a key fundamental difference. You're baptized. And then you have to live faithfully. What does that mean? Do the best you can. Well, what if I mess up? Get up. When you fall down, get up. Scrape your knee. Dust yourself off. Uh, that's a bad acronym. You, we used to go outside and fall and skin our knee on the bike. Kids don't know what that means. If you lose all your lives on the game, <laughs> start over. You get blown up on the fifth stage. That's what it means to live faithfully. Because eventually, you'll get past that stage. And eventually, you'll make it on in. I don't know where you are. I don't know. But God knows. And you know. So 
but important for us to make a choice to choose him. If you've already named him and you stumble, that's okay. You mean, brother, life is okay that I stumble? Yeah, because we stumble. It can't be not okay, because we do. We stumble. We fall. But we got to get back up. And so if you need help with that prayer, or if you just need somebody to walk with you, we'll do that. But you got to let us know. So we invite you to respond as together we stand and together we sing. Number 61361 three. Two, Jesus, for the same power. Are you washing the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace? Is how are you washing the blood of the Lamb? Are you, are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood? Of the Lamb, of the Lamb, are your you washed in the blood of the Lamb? You may be seated. Amen. We have three that remain standing. We'll start on my left uh, with Sister Tom. Good morning. Good morning. Sister Wilson, good morning. Kind, merciful Father, Lord, Lord, King of Kings, we thank you, God, for this day. We thank you for the blessings of this day. We thank you for life, health, and for strength. We uh, thank you for your son, Jesus, who uh, gave his life for us. We thank you for the relationship we have with you because of that life. Uh, we thank you for the ability to talk to you and to uh, share with you the things that are going on in our lives. We Thank you for your providence. 
um, in our lives, particularly on the uh, Melvin's travel. Um, I ask that you watch over brother as he returns on tomorrow. We thank you for the deliverance that was experienced by my sister Wilson and sister Benjamin. We thank you for watching over them. Father, we call also asking for uh, your peace, uh, for tranquility, uh, for shelter in the time of storm, uh, for James and uh, his family, uh, for him, for his other sisters, uh, his mom, his dad, their entire family, Father, as they uh, go through this time. We all go through it uh, at various times, but and we're never prepared. We're never ready, and so Father, we just ask that you um, be with them, uh, show up for them in a mighty way. Father, we're also careful to remember those who, over the last months, year, have had losses as well. Continue to watch over them, uh, to be with them, help them continue to put things back together throughout the ship. Be with us all. Help us to be a good family. Help us to support one another and care for one another. And help us to be the very best uh, soldiers for you that we can. We love you so much. And we thank you. And we all do this prayer not in our own name. Uh, but in Jesus' name we pray. And we all say, Amen. Man, we're so very thankful for each and every one of you who is here uh, with us on today. Uh, the 43rd Annual Youth Conference for Christ is coming up. Um, we're looking for confirmation by next week, I believe, by next week, whether your child will be attending or not. We need to make final numbers so we can prepare uh, for transportation. Um, if you are if your child is attending, we ask that you get with uh, Savaya. Savaya, raise your hand, um, and she'll help you get that finalized. We appreciate you. We ask that we stand at this time uh, as Brother Wilson will lead us in our closing prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all the blessings of this day. We thank you for the message that we have received. And we thank you for the messenger who brought this message to us. We pray, our Father, that we might all take this message and use it as a light on our pathway. Now, as we prepare to leave this place here today, we pray that you would go with those who are traveling or those who may be preparing to travel, that, that they might receive safe passage. And we pray that you would send your Holy Spirit to be with us, to be our guide, our comforter and our protection. And we pray that you would bring us together again in due season as such would be your divine will. In the name of your son Jesus, we pray and ask all things. Amen. Amen.